Hey again everyone, how's it going? This is Rexford here, and welcome back to another game maker tutorial. And today what we're going to be doing is going over something called Parallax Scrolling. Now, I'm sure by clicking on this video you already have at least a basic concept of what Parallax Scrolling actually is. But what we're going to be doing today is sort of expanding on that concept and modifying a bit so that whenever we move, or excuse me, whenever our view actually moves, that is, um, that is when our backgrounds are going to scroll, instead of just, say, going to the backgrounds tab in our room options here and changing up the horizontal speed for each background. So, let me go ahead and just run the game really quick just to show you guys a better example of what I mean. Nice new organized desktop here. Alright, so anyway, we have our player, we have this random tile here, and I just put that there just to kind of signify that we are actually moving uh, past stuff and, you know, yeah. Alright, so we have a player, and whenever our player moves, our backgrounds don't move, but when our player's view moves, our backgrounds start moving. And this just gives a better sense that we are actually moving through the map or level, and it's just a really cool feature to have. So, that's what we're going to be doing today, guys. I'm going to go and exit this, head into Game Maker, and let's see how this all works. So, uh, I'm going to not go over the sprites today. I'm going to skip over those because we don't need those at all. They don't really have any significance with this, um, so it's not even really worth going into those. But, what is worth going into is our background. So, as you can see, we have three backgrounds here. Um, one of them does not matter. You see that cute one here. Um, but these two ones right here do the front and the back. And they're named accordingly to what they are in the room. So the front one here is just a 64 by 64 little kind of gradient filled mountain. And it signifies that it is the front uh, background or tile, I guess, um, that we want to use in our map. So, you know, just for organization's sake. And the back one is the same as well. Now, it's a bit hard, I know, to kind of tell the difference between the two. But the front one is actually a bit darker than the back one is. And that's because in real life, when you're closer to something, um, the colors are more, um, they're more visible. Right? You can see more detail and whatnot, and it's a little darker, right? Because everything is more kind of fleshed out. Whereas if something is farther away, it's a bit lighter in that, you know, the colors are a bit more faded out because it's not as close to us and we can't recognize all the details and whatnot. So that's sort of how, um, or sort of why I did that. And uh, it isn't that visible, but, you know, just in case you guys did notice it, that's why it's there. Alright, so um, heading down to the objects now, so our player object as well as our collision object actually don't have any significance um, whatsoever in this tutorial. I'll just quickly show you guys what's in these code boxes in case you're curious. Uh, movement, gravity, jumping, and just collision with our collision. Uh, in uh, reality, we actually could use anything besides a player, like uh, anything other than a player or whatever, like we could use whatever object just so long as it has the view because the views are really what matters in this uh, video, no I'm kidding, in this tutorial. Um, so yeah, which I'll get to that in just a moment. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to head into this background CTRL object and this is our object that actually matters here. And in case you're wondering, the CTRL stands for controller, so yeah. Alright, so what we're going to do in here is add event and step and step. And again, this is the only object that you really need in the game for this to work. Alright, and control and go and put a code, or a code box in there. Controller box. A code box. And what we're going to do is put these two codes right here. Background underscore x, 0. And background underscore x, 1. Um, the 0 and the 1 uh, stand for the backgrounds themselves in the room. So 0 is you know the, one, the first one. 1 is the second one. Okay, and the equals view underscore x view, uh, zero, again, that zero stands for our current view, so if you have, say, a bunch of different views, then, you know, the one that's following whatever that moves in the room, you'd want to go ahead and replace that with, like, view one or whatever. But since I only have one view set, I'm going to go ahead and put view zero. All right, and then this little symbol right here, which I can never remember the name of, but, you know, that little symbol right there, the multiplication symbol, I suppose. Um, and then we're going to put these values, 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. Now, you can change these up. You can do a little bit of experimenting, but I find that these values work very well if you're just using two simple backgrounds like the ones I'm using in here. All right, so I'm going to go and exit out of that. And we're going to want to put that in the room. doesn't matter where, just anywhere in the room. And what we're going to do next is we're going to go in our backgrounds tab and set up our backgrounds, if you haven't already. So the reason why I named these front and back is just not to signify um, that they are front and back, but for also, you know, for organizational purposes. So 
the way, if you go, or, excuse me, if you don't know, get ahead myself in words, um, if you don't know how this works, is background zero is the very back background, okay? Background one is the, well, I mean, it's the background above background zero, and so on and so forth. So background zero is the very back one, so we're going to go ahead and choose our back background. And you can go ahead and change up the Y values. I changed mine up to uh, 330, so it's behind this one. And then background one is 360, so, you know, it matches up with my ground here, 360, and is still in front of this one. All right, now we're going to go ahead and now that we have our background set up, we're going to go to the Views tab and set up a view. So we're going to hit Enable the use of views and Visible in Room Starts and View 0 is checked. So remember back to when we went over the views, which view we'd have. So View 0 is my only view here, so that's the reason why we put View 0 in there. So View in Room, um, our room properties are 640 by 480. So I change up my view to be 320 by 240, which is half those values. And then the port on screen, which is how big the window is going to be of your game, uh, not the view, but the actual window of the game, uh, I just kept that by 640 by 480. And the object's going to be following, my player object, all right. And HBOR and VBOR, which are the walls that we're going to hit when our player actually moves, to, so the view moves, uh, I just put 320 and 240. All right, so that is, we've set up our views, all right, we have set up uh, the way our background scrolls, okay, we put our player in the room, the only thing that's left to do is simply run the game, and we also set up our backgrounds too, if I didn't mention that, and uh, you should have this little end result, so it is very simple to do this, um, and I realize we are at six minutes, but in a way, there is still a bit to explain. I want to make sure you guys understand, like, you know, how this works and, you know, what all is needed to actually set this up. So, um, that's the reason why I guess this tutorial is almost seven minutes long. Uh, but yeah, that is how to do parallax scrolling, controlled parallax scrolling, and uh, hopefully it helps you guys out for those of you who have wanted to do this sort of thing. Very, very simple to do, and uh, hopefully uh, it you know, works out for you guys in the future. So with that said, uh, we're up to finally seven minutes. Oh my goodness. Uh, thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Uh, there will be more in the future. Sorry for kind of being on this little hiatus for videos and whatnot for a while. Uh, I've been a bit busy with stuff and stuff, getting stuff ready. And um, hopefully more tutorials, more videos will come out soon. Uh, I plan to put out New World preview a little bit here. Hopefully this week. Uh, might have to be next week for those of you guys waiting for that. But nonetheless, um, that is that. And until next time, until next video, this has been Rex Furry. And as always, I'll see you all then.